so you guys might know that I like to collect coins, especially extremely old things. I mean, I collect everything old, so why not coins? And the up till now, the oldest coin that I've owned was a, a franc from 1856. And this time, I blew that out of the water by almost a whole century. Actually, more than a century. I got these off eBay for 15 bucks. They are minted by the Dutch East India Company in the mid-1700s. That is insanely old, especially because I grew up in the United States, which pretty much around here, the oldest thing you can find is from the 1850s. So this coin is from 1780. This one is from 1732. This coin is from 1764. And this one from 1746. And what's interesting is on these, they're very crude design because the back image does not, uh, isn't the same orientation to the front image. Like for instance, these, uh, this one, it's almost, well, oh, that's a double print there. They did that one twice, it looks like. Now these coins were found in a shipwreck around 1920 or so, and they were then bought at, uh, recently bought at an estate sale by an eBay seller, and I bought it from him, and it was coming from the Netherlands. Now here's a little info that I did not know. There's actually many different types of, of East India companies. There's the Dutch East India Company, which has the, the VOC logo, the O and the C going through the, the vertices on the, the V. And then we have the British East India Company that was formed several decades later. And that has a more of like a triangle with the uh, their initials on that. And I think there's a couple other East India Companies too. But basically, the goal of the, the Dutch East India Company was to steal the spice trade from the Portuguese because there was a lot of money to, ha to be had there. And also, the formation of the Dutch East India Company really changed the definition of a company. Because, I mean, this is just my understanding of it, but let's say we go back to the year 1200 or something like that. A company would be more like a, a union of merchants. It wouldn't, be, it wouldn't necessarily be like the governmental structure system like it like like it was in the 17 and 1600s and even like it is kind of now the dutch east india company was actually more like a government than a union of merchants because the dutch east india company could actually convict uh criminals and they could uh, kill criminals they could take over property they could make their own states basically they could start wars and that's basically what a government does and then i mean that's also the problem is they were they weren't very accountable because they were giving the power of a government into a company that was only wanting money. I'd have to say governments are a little bit a little bit more uh, accountable than just a company. Like I wouldn't trust Walmart with having the ability to declare war. A pretty radical way to get to grab the spice trade and bring it to your country is to build a, com a company with so much power. Not only did the Dutch East India Company have the self-proclaimed right to do whatever it wanted, it also had a lot of assets to do whatever it wanted. It had almost 5,000 ships throughout its entire uh, existence and carried, uh, between 1602 and 1795, it carried 2.5 million tons of cargo from Asia. Now there was actually a f kind of funny chain of, of, of events that led me to find this auction. This is Anno 1602. It's a, a German-made game, then it was re-released for English audiences. It was made around 1998, and, well, it's just one of the best games I've ever played. I played it so much. But I started thinking, why the hell did they pick 1602? Uh, I mean, did something happen that year? And so to figure out the answer to, to my problem, I went to the biggest encyclopedia known to man, Wikipedia, and sure enough, on March 20th of 1602, the Dutch East India Company was founded. And given that this is a business and trading game, I mean, th that's the entire point of the game, is trading and making an empire of trading spices and stuff, like the East India Company. Well, I would assume that's probably why they picked 1602. And then, of course, on the Wikipedia page for the Dutch East India Company, they, ha they had to have a, a picture of one of their coins. And so I had to run to eBay to see how, how much one of those cost, and it was pretty cool, so I had to, had to buy one. It's funny how 
A simple train of events like that can lead you to making an awesome purchase. Now, the thing is, I actually don't really know a lot about the Dutch East India Company yet. I plan on, I'll probably do a, a, a quick little short documentary about it later on. But for the meantime, let's talk about the coins themselves. I kind of want to see what kind of wear and tear they've gone through underneath my microscope. Okay, so we are going to be looking at them in the sequence of what I determined to be from lowest quality to the highest quality. So here's the lowest quality. This is the 1780 coin. There's a very faint 1 there. A very faint 7. 8. And I believe that to be a 0. Next up we have the 1732 coin. There's a 1. Uh, there's a 7. There's a 3. And there's what I think is a 2. Now this one is interesting because there's bits of copper or whatever it's made of and then it's been eaten away to have that black behind it. And on the back side you can see that there's it still has the dimples or whatever you call them on the side of the coin which is actually really interesting because that means the outside of the coin didn't corrode as much as the inside of the coin did. Ooh, that's really pitted there. Let's turn off the man magnification to 100 times. Now we have the very smooth one, but it's very easy to read. It's the 1764 coin. There we have the 1, 7, which is in great condition compared to the other ones. Then we have our six, and we have, obviously, a four. Which I'm guessing these these may have been copper-plated, because that's, that's how it looks to be. Although I don't know sure if they would have invested in copper plating. They might have just taken a copper nugget and squished it. There's the bottom of the V. Let's raise the magnification again. Back to, back to 100 times. And then last of all, we have our 1746 coin, which seems to be the, high, uh, the best quality one. And it also has the green patina on it too, so that's pretty interesting. We have our, our one, our seven, our four, and our six. And on the six is some really interesting patina, or uh, copper hydroxide, I think. Let's go back to 100 times. And ooh, that's a really interesting shape. Interesting shape indeed. I always like how they're like little crystals. Some of the best things to look at under, under a microscope can be found on old pennies and coins. I have to say, it's really interesting how all of the patina on each coin seems a little bit different because each one has its own little story. Like this one seems like thin layers but yet with chunks of patina. Some of the other ones are very worn away. But then again, it might just be that they were they started out in, uh, encrusted in thick layers of mud from being at the bottom of the ocean anyway. So they uh, were cleaned, and, and the differences in them now are just due to how they were cleaned or how much they were cleaned. Oh, I gotta say, these are probably the coolest coins I've ever owned. And a really nice piece of history too. Well, thanks for watching.